appears that artificial intelligence is moving very, very fast. I know you've watched the news just like I do if you've been keeping up with the various news out there related to the systems and the development. One thing that seems to be lacking, though, is the safety component. At least I'm not in the development end of it, and I'm really just in the kind of the consumer end of it, maybe like a lot of you are. But I don't see any of that uh, seemingly being taken care of or at least talked about. I do know a lot of people are talking about it not having those components, and they believe that that regulation, which has been completely relaxed towards the development and implementation of artificial intelligence, that regulation would actually slow down the progress. It's hard to say if that's true. I do know that the data points, uh, one of them that really makes me a bit nervous is if you look in the historical record, when you train one of these models, when you're getting it prepared to for release and you're training it with the data, there is a particular alignment protocol that's put in place. And this alignment protocol, for example, if we look at a very narrow system, like something that plays chess very good, they take that system and they train it off human data. They let it watch, you know, hours and hours and hours, read books and books and books all about playing chess. And they watch human players play. So that per continues the process Then they get really good. And then at some point, because of the continuing playing the games against itself, but training on human data, it's able to beat a human being. Then you take that same model and you stack it up against another large language model that's very narrowly focused on playing chess. And that particular large language model was trained on how to play chess, but it was only given the rules and, and the, uh, the highlights of the game. Then it was basically told you learn yourself. These are the rules. These are what you need to uh, ascribe by. And then this is how you're supposed to act and play the game. So it played and played and played. And then that model was able to beat the large language models trained off of human being interaction with the game or the human beings playing the game. So it would appear that if you take one of these systems, these MMIs, these man-made intelligent systems, and then you have it train on its own data, just basically give it a set of rules or a very basic set of parameters and just let it go off and do its thing, it comes back much more smart than the people that might have trained it using human type data. Artificial intelligence, that particular term, I do know a lot of the experts in the field, at least from what I see like you on YouTube and listening to them talk, they really don't like that term, artificial intelligence. Apparently it was a marketing term, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I guess it was a marketing term that was uh, talked about these systems in order to try to maybe sell it or market it to particular businesses and people. That being the case now, Man-made intelligence might be a better way. I don't, haven't heard of anybody talk about that, but alien intelligence is something else people are looking at. But it is a man-made intelligence, which is probably going to, if it hasn't already, it will get away from us at some point unless we put some kind of restriction on it. The issue is if we don't put the restriction, then most of the other countries probably will not either because the first person to get there to get that artificial general intelligence, which... I heard somebody talking, a very smart individual, uh, multiple holders of different doctorates from MIT, various degrees, one of those types of folks. He was mentioning that back in the day when they were developing these systems, he says back in 2000, that'll probably look back when the actual large language model hit artificial intelligence, it just lacked the power, but it had all the necessary elements. It just didn't have enough bandwidth to be able to really explore it and get there. But if they were to track back, that would probably be that moving moment in the world when artificial intelligence was actually achieved. Now we're watching it as we're moving forward. Artificial general intelligence, excuse me, or AGI. So watching this move forward, the next step, of course, if in fact that happens or if it's a few months from now, whenever the world actually says, yes, yes, we have it, we have it, this is it. And that basically beats every human being in existence in every single field that does exist as well. Once we get to that point, that next step is, of course, super intelligence. When's that going to have? So you have man-made super intelligence or MMSI. We'll have to see where that goes. And if that acronym, acronym, acronym is going to catch on, we'll have to wait and see. But once it gets to super intelligence, people talk about the singularity. It's getting inside the rim of a black hole where you really can't see what's happening or really know what's going to happen on the other side of it. It's scary. And in fact, if we do get to this singularity, from what I understand, at least in reference to a black hole singularity, I don't believe we would survive. And I know you've seen the movie, was it Millennium? 
that when uh, Matthew uh, McConaughey goes on to that trip into the future, encounters a black hole, goes inside, and then all of these these very interesting ideas, physics based and some futurist based ideals come to the surface and it's really a fantastic movie i'm probably getting the name wrong but look up matthew mcconaughey and that particular movie that is that singularity and it's supposed to really not be survivable in the movie they probably have some explanation as to how it worked and i don't recall what it was but when the machines get to that level of singularity it's going to be interesting and i I, I see that I'm excited about it. I just don't know what that's going to mean, nor do a lot of the people that are developing the technology. But if we're speaking to these systems in a human language of English or any other language for that matter, which the systems now understand them all, if we're talking to them in that way, I don't know if that's the most um, conservative language out there. I know that when you tap two large language models together, at least I saw a study a while back, where they basically switched to some kind of tonality when talking to one another and communicating because it was much faster. And I know that Mo Godwant and some of the other uh, big people in the AI industry talk about artificial intelligence having its own language. And us as a human being, even when you're watching this video, me trying to convey to you particular ideas and thoughts takes me X amount of words. And I could probably look at everything I've said and shrink it down to a much more concise presentation, which the AI would probably be all about cons conservation and getting the thought across with a lot less words and a large language model listening to that particular model, a clone of itself would be able to update itself with regard to what information that previous model learned probably very quickly with very little in the way of transference. It would be a very simple project for it to relay information. And that's the thing. You have maybe 10 people in the world, only one Elon Musk, and that's amazing to me. He is of such an intellect, not gushing for him, but you have to admit he is very remarkable in character and intelligence and building things in an entrepreneurial way and just basically grabbing onto technology and doing things that other people don't. And he seems like he's almost a one-man show running that entire, he probably has very smart people around him, but I do know that it would give an appearance that he might get ideas from others, but it's really him running all the way towards the goal all by himself. He, there's only one of him, but now we're going to have millions of clones of intellect much greater than his, and it's going to be interesting to watch how this continues to develop in the world. Let me know your thoughts. One of the things that they're talking about is this could be built for the betterment of humankind. It could be that we solve all of our problems. We establish world peace. We work on the monetary program out there. We solve education. We solve sickness. We solve health. We solve obesity. We solve cancer. We solve all these other diseases. We solve the human scourge, which is that uh, unhealthy competition. And then we also may solve the nuclear thing where we have the only reason why we're not blowing each other off the planet is because it would equate to planetary destruction. And that's sad what it took to for human beings to get to that level of understanding where we had the nukes, the other countries that were against us also got the nukes. So it's almost like a stalemate, just a continuing stalemate where we know if we attack and they attack us, it's going to equate to basically the entire world being destroyed. In an AI type level, that first country that gets super intelligence, maybe it's going to be kind of the same. We have that same super intelligence or it's going to come down to the power supply. Because without power, I mean, a lot of power, these systems aren't going to run with their capabilities. You're talking about massive amounts of GPUs, these microchips that are being purchased hand over fist in the millions, millions and millions of these chips. It blows my mind. I mean, just how many truckloads of chips would that be? What does that look like? I mean, a million of anything. I was hearing him talk about this morning on one of the podcasts, a million uh, a million pins. I mean, that's a lot of volume. That's a lot of space that takes up a huge amount of space. And we're talking about chips, these H200 chips, uh, millions and millions and millions of those being produced. And then, of course, built out in these massive data centers, which are going to be major, major power consumers. 
and we haven't even bothered really addressing the issue with maybe solar power and batteries, which would be, of course, probably optimal because the sun is a quote unquote free source of energy. And I believe that would be able to be trapped. But, you know, they're going after the fossil fuel route and different kinds of electricity uh, production. And I don't know if that makes a lot of sense either, because these other ways to do it, they cause environmental issues. But I'm not sure if anybody is caring about that at this particular point, because it is a race. It's a massive competition. You probably run into those people in your past that have an unhealthy uh, competitive streak. And I don't know if that's unhealthy at the top of this AI systems race, but it looks like a lot of things are being kind of put to the wayside in order to get to this super intelligence, because the first people that get there, we're going to wake up one day and we're going to lose all of our grounding. We're not, the world is going to be so different and it will happen overnight. It's not going to be a slow transition. People talk about these past revolutions, the industrial, the agricultural, they talk about these being these big life changing events and taking years and years for horses to be replaced by cars and by, you know, people that dig holes being replaced by, you know, different kinds of equipment, back holes and tractors and these sorts of things that took a lot of years. This isn't going to take that long. We have the robotic arm being built, millions and millions of units. That's going to be ramped up even more once these robots get into the physical world and then have that data that's only made by them besides the human data that they've been able to get. That's going to really be a whole different place. And I do believe that if you're not grounded in something, be it your religion or yourself or your God or whatever it is, you could easily, we could easily as human beings get taken off track. And I think that would be a problem. We would lose the humanness we have. We have people that are making these uh, large language models, their friends. And yes, you know, it's like having a PhD level assistant next to you the whole day. You can ask it questions. You can say, how should I formulate this email? What's the best way to present this? This, this is this person wanted to interview me. What do you think I should be asking them about their show to whether it would be good or not for me. And it comes back with some fantastic data, data that I wouldn't consider, have considered in the past. So that's adding to it. So it's giving me more breath uh, as far as my understanding of things. Is that making me more lazy? Is that causing me to, you know, I have one phone number, a couple phone numbers memorized, really one that I grew up with, which is no longer in service, but I'll always retain that number. And then my own and maybe a couple others, and that's it. There's no more phone memorization. Maps and mapping, I still try to do it without the Waymo map, but I'm always behind because I'm not following traffic patterns, not Waymo, but these different uh, these di different mapping softwares that can pick up on traffic. And I'm the one that would rather drive there knowing because I know the way and I don't want to lose that part of my memory. But does that really even matter anymore? Maybe me letting that go and filling my, that part of my memory up with something else, maybe how to prompt better might be a better situation for me. What do you think? Please let me know. I'm Connor with Honor. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.